This is Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz on the west side of Los Angeles, joined by Sheila Kuehl. She is a member of the Board of Supervisors in Los Angeles County. In November, the voters of the city of Los Angeles passed uh, Triple H, which provided funding essentially to build housing for homeless. Now, recently, it appears, votes are still being counted, that the county voters passed Measure H, a quarter cent sales tax, essentially for homeless services. So this is a one-two punch. Exactly. Right. I mean, the, the interesting thing is I think for a long time everybody thought, well, you just provide services and people get better and right. they won't be homeless. <laughs> and we discovered, oh, no, no, they need somewhere to, you know, move to mm -hmm. because the rents are just going up and up and up and up and up. And so we had to secure the ability to build, to rehab, and that's what the city of L.A. did. But we still have to provide those services, right. mental health services, physical health services, and now more and more job training and placement because you could move into a place, but you have to have a job to keep it. The crisis is bona fide. We're reaching 50,000 homeless in Los Angeles County. And what's so unique about this crisis, in my mind, is that we don't see 50,000 people on Skid Row. We see many in Santa Monica, right. in the Valley, I mean, throughout your, you know, well-heeled district. Everywhere. They're everywhere. And we've talked about this. I mean, when I see a homeless person, when my daughters see homeless people, they're teenagers, we're simultaneously scared but empathetic. Mm -hmm. We don't know what to do. Is H and Triple H going to at least move the ball a bit? Oh, I think it'll move the ball a lot. I mean, the major problem is uh, we get 150 people off the street tomorrow, 300 people fall into homelessness at the same time right. because the rents keep going up. I mean, there's a little known law that was passed uh, back in the 90s, Costa Hawkins. Right. And it says that wherever there's a vacancy, the landlord can raise the rent right up to market. Right. So if you've had rent control in your city, it doesn't count in that place. So somebody moves out, uh, somebody passes away, the apartment becomes vacant, boom, it goes right up right. You know, to another place that you can't afford. You're hitting on something that's important, and that's the question of not only affordable housing, which is housing for low income, but housing that is affordable. Right. I mean, we are facing dual crises on those fronts because the affordable housing regime has been hit dramatically because of the elimination of redevelopment. And that housing that's affordable, I mean, that's the market's taking off again. Well, interestingly enough, the um, redevelopment agencies in each city were done away with. Mm -hmm. But the amount of money that comes in from the redevelopment, uh, in, increased taxes, right, the still goes on. The thing is, we're now just splitting it the way we split all property taxes. Right. Cities get some, School county districts. gets some. Yeah. And so what we're doing with it actually is building affordable housing. Uh, we're gonna go up to $100 million a year in the county in the next several years. I'm doing it incrementally. Okay. 20, then 40, then 60, you. then, you know. But uh, we're gonna do it. You represent Calabasas? Yes. So my parents live in Calabasas. I grew up in Calabasas. I think I knew that. You knew right? that, you did. <laughs> they are advancing in age and they're moving to a condominium complex in Calabasas. Uh -huh. um, beautiful complex. Uh, I learned through their move that Four of the units in this new complex in Calabasas Park are affordable. It was part of the development. Hundreds of people applied for right. those four units. Not a hundred, hundreds. I mean, when you have lotteries like that, something is amiss. Well, I think it's totally out of control. Right. I, I really do. I mean, I've had this sort of conflict with the apartment association right. because they maintain it's a business, we're in business, we ought to be able to raise the rents right. to whatever we want. We don't have any responsibility, they say, right. to make certain that people, because you know, our units are full, we've got lots of rich people. So it falls to the county, it falls to the cities to try to maintain certain areas. And I'm becoming more and more convinced that we have to build housing, we have to rehab housing, we have to uh, pay subsidies for housing so that people can afford it. And that's what we're doing. And it's only government that does right. it. Private industry doesn't care anything about it. Re on the same ballot where H passed, there was Measure S, which would have stated simply, uh, put some restrictions on the development of certain projects. It failed. Um, but it does seem as if, as if at least the conversation has gotten started about planning because there were some current concerns about how planning is done. Now, I know that's at some level a city issue. Well, yes and no, because the county, 10% of the county is unincorporated. Mm -hmm. And that means we're the city right. government. 
for a million people scattered throughout the county. And you probably uh, have some decent amounts. I'm thinking about your district. Well, my district does not it's actually. Well, oh, we it's only well have Topanga and a little bit of the okay. marina. Okay. The rest is mostly LA City, right. you know, up in the valley. Right. But there were two different things that S would have affected. And they became kind of conflated in a way that I thought sort of helped defeat it, right. but was really not understood. One is people were thinking these big mega developments, expensive apartments, the kind of stuff we've been talking right. about. But the other area is wherever you needed some kind of a variance to right. build something, and that was every unit of affordable <laughs> housing. And it would have barred that. Right. So here you have Measure Triple H in the city saying, let's build all this housing, and Measure S would have said, no, you can't. Right. So I think people really recognize that. But can we at least take S's defeat to look at the issue that the proponents were bringing up, which is the planning process is a bit broken. Well, we're a bit grinchy about approving <laughs> great big mega whatever in the county, right. because a lot of the county unincorporated area, with the exception of you know my part, Topanga, right. and, which is kind of homey in it its is, own way, it is. Uh, and the marina, but other areas really need affordable housing. And we look at those areas and say, why aren't we building a lot of workforce housing around the MLK hospital, right, the new hospital? Right. Why aren't we? And we listen to each other. There's only five of us. And so we say, you know what? I grew up in your district. I care about your district. Mm. Um, I used to live there. I you know, went to school there, whatever. We're very thoughtful together about it. I want to shift gears, if I may, and talk about the concept of bail. Right. Uh, what we know briefly is that even for minor crimes, uh, in order to be released after arrest, you will often have to put up a certain amount for bail. And there are many folks that just don't have that money and can't get a bail bond. And so we see our jails filled with people that are awaiting trial. 450,000 people are awaiting trial. In the in, state, in not, the state. not in, the, in the county. Yeah, in the state, but that's still a massive number. Well, I think the, um, I was very gratified that we unanimously passed mm -hmm. a motion that I brought that Hilda Solis co-authored mm -hmm. with me to take a real deep dive, but quickly, in this area. We've got the DA on board to come and work with us. We have the courts because they're the ones that set right. the bail uh, to work with us. But in the county, there are a number of different departments that are engaged in it. How quickly? Because, you know, government can move slowly. Well, we can't tell the courts what to do. It's the third branch. We can't tell the DA what to do. She's independently elected. Okay. So we have to work together and come to an arrangement so that we can do certain things. Who but sets I'll tell bail? You, I mean, who, who sets the standards for bail? Well, there is a state sort uh, of um, commission maybe. bail, uh, you know, a list of what kind of bail you charge okay. for certain kinds of offenses. So we're going to also have to convince the state that just because these two people may have broken and entered and yeah. taken something, this one may be a danger or maybe a danger for flight. Right. This one not. A lot right. of ties in the community, right. definitely going to show up. What we want to adopt is an instrument that assesses that so that people get out. There's a presumption that they get out on their own recognizance unless they pose some kind of a danger. I'd like you to come back and talk more about this. Unfortunately, we don't have more time, but you'll All come right. back for hey, sure. You got Her name is Sheila Kuehl. She is a member of the Board of Supervisors in Los Angeles County. My name is Brad Pomerantz. Thank you so much for joining us on Local Edition.